I was thinking about, you know, getting back together and what kind of a message. I mean, we obviously all need encouragement. We could use a little bit of that. And, uh, and yet I felt like, uh, like God kind of led me to uh, this message. And uh, it's just talking about the heart of man in general. Our hearts are deceitful. I just, the, the, the message is deceitful hearts. And, and I, I see this as we understand in a couple of ways. It, it would help us when we, when we listen to this message to understand the world in general and, uh, and everybody else. Hang on here. I'm going to have to, have to find a, a page keeper. Maybe that'll work. <laughs> All right. But, uh, but also in our own hearts to know that to know what the scripture says about our hearts. Now, if our hearts were deceitful and then there's nothing we could do about it, how tragic that would be, wouldn't it? But there's something we can do about it, amen? And uh, there's somebody who understands our hearts and understands every motive of our heart, and so uh, he works with us. Um, as, we were, as we were doing, uh, have been doing, uh, our, those of you who are going through the Bible uh, with us, uh, I, I begin to notice a pattern as, it, as kings come and kings go, uh, it, it talks about them and uh, about, their, about their reign, whether it was good, bad, whether they followed the Lord or they didn't follow the Lord. And, uh, and one of the things that is there constantly says that concerning these kings, it says his heart was fully devoted to the Lord. It says that in different ways. His heart was completely devoted to the Lord. But, uh, or in some kings it says his heart was not devoted to the Lord. And it was interesting too that some of the kings that made some big mistakes, they didn't you know, and, and I, first of all, I, I say, when I read the Old Testament, it gives me hope because I've made plenty of mistakes. I've, I've messed up and I flat sinned uh, long, many times since I got saved way back as a little child. And I'm so glad for the mercy and the grace of God. Amen. I'm so glad that, that his, his blood covers when we come and we ask forgiveness. Forgiveness is there for us. And so, uh, so I thought that was interesting, though, that but, but you find the, the kings that that had a heart that was fully devoted to God. I see that as our life. God says, you know, we, we walk through life and we stumble sometimes. The, the enemy sets traps for us or, or we, we finally, we just maybe walk right into something. But, but overall, our bent is we're walking toward God. Our hunger is for God. Our desires for God. We want to serve Him. We want to please Him. Amen. And, and so when we do mess up, we quickly repent and say, God, forgive me. And He forgives us. Amen. And, and we continue in fellowship with Him. That's, that's, that's what He desires in our life. But uh, I wanted just to read just a couple of chapter, chapters, not chapters, but verses. First of all, I tried to keep it short because of uh, the wind out here and everything else. In Mark chapter 7, verse 21 through 23, Mark 7, 21 through 23, uh, Jesus is speaking here. And, and here's what he says. This is Jesus himself. He says, For from within, out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, Malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All of these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. Wow. Earlier he said, it's not what you eat that makes you unclean. It's what comes out of your heart. And, and, and church, if we ever could see that happening, it's happening in our world right now, isn't it? You, you see every one of those things uh, born out in what's happening across America today and just the total anarchy and the craziness. Uh, and, and a lot of people say, well, they're good. Per well, no, that's what's coming out of the heart. <laughs> uh, there's something in there that needs to be changed, needs to be transformed. And, and there's, we know, as we know, only one way to do that. Now, now, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 through 10. Jeremiah 17, verse 9 through 10. Here's what it says. The heart is deceitful above all things. And, and this isn't me. This is what God's word says about our hearts. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Now that's a pretty big indictment, isn't it? I mean, all right, let's give it up if it's beyond cure. It's beyond cure. Well, let me just say, well, as we share today, we understand you can't cure it yourself. There is a cure, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Deceitful above all things, beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. God says he's the one who checks out our hearts. He alone knows, and by the 
power of His Holy Spirit, amen, if we will surrender to Him. And that's why it's so important. We don't just say a prayer to avoid hell so we think we can get to heaven. That we surrender our lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Because when we're surrendered totally, wholly, completely surrendered to Him, He'll take our heart and He'll change it. I like to say He cleans us up from the inside out. See, sometimes we can put on the dog, we can do the actions that are churchy or religious, and, and everybody else thinks we're very good. But God sees the heart. He knows what's it. And it's so much better when the heart is changed and we do what we do on the outside, not because we have to, not because there's rules and regulations, not because, but because we love the Lord and we're fully and totally devoted to Him. Our heart is toward Him and He's moving in our hearts and our lives in a great way. Only God can search our hearts and examine our, our reins or our mind to see what we think. Now, now there's a... Well, I'm not going to read that scripture. I'll, I'll just pass that one, but there's too many. But, but I, want to, I, want to, I want to just talk to you about... When we, when we say the heart, a lot of people say, Oh, I just believe it in my heart. In my heart, I just know it. Don't we say that? And, and, uh, and sometimes, we, we, if we're not careful, we say that. We forget about intellect. <laughs> We forget about a lot of things. We, sometimes our, our, our emotions drive what we think we know, right? Or we jump on the bandwagon with somebody else's emotions. And, uh, and it just seems so right at the time. But then when we examine the facts and we examine everything about it, we should have done that. We shouldn't have gone that direction. And so, so I want to say that, that, that the important thing is that, that the heart is moldable by the Lord Jesus Christ. And... Uh, I, th I think if we would read another scripture in Jeremiah, it has to do with the potter's will, where when the, when the piece of clay that was on the, on the mold there wasn't working out right, and so the potter had to break it and make it all new. And, and only Jesus can do that. And I liked, it, I liked it, this analogy too, if you remember uh, the, the 30 pieces of silver that, Jesus, uh, that Judas uh, paid and betrayed Jesus with. They bought, what did they buy? They bought the potter's field. What was the potter's field? It was where all the rejects, the people who couldn't afford to buy their own place to be buried, where they, where they were placed. And, and what, God, what I believe God was saying to us, you, if you feel like you're a reject, if you feel like you're at the low end of the totem pole, not in God's eyes you're not. Amen. You have been purchased from the rejects to the greatest among us who may think they're the greatest. We've all been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so he wants to change our hearts. And, and so as I thought about this, I, I wanted to look at, at the life of David, since we've been kind of going through that recent, not just uh, is about a week ago for me, I believe, but the life of David. You know, David was a was an incredible man. He was a he was an athlete. He was a warrior. Uh, yet he was a musician. He he was, wrote poetry. It's kind of hard to, hard to match poetry with a warrior. You know, with a, a blood a guys uh, with blood on his hands, and yet he was he was he was a genius. He was a general. He was probably, uh, by most accounts, everybody believes, the greatest king of Israel. And, and God used him mightily. And yet his life, there's a strange mixture often of good and evil. Many noble deeds, yet he also committed gross sin. Uh, uh, no other Bible character more fully illustrates the moral range of, of human nature, I think, than, than David's did. Uh, and an amazing that thing that after all of this that God said, he's a man after my own heart. And here we get this following holy, being wholly devoted to God. I, I believe the difference in David and King Saul was, was King Saul was devoted to himself. He was devoted to what people thought about him. He wasn't as concerned about God, his devotion to God, as he was to man and to pride and arrogance. And, and, and so there, there's a difference there. But David, David's heart, even though he messed up, even though he messed up big time, his heart of hearts was to please the Lord. And, uh, and we see that in his life. Uh, he was a man after God's own heart. He never became an idolater, but he remained loyal to God. And, and as we look, in, and you can look in 2 Samuel if you want to look at this, but uh, chapter 11. But his, his, uh, his pathway to his sin. And can I say that, that we, we, especially if we're walking and we're talking with God and we're in tune with God, we, we don't just generally walk away one day and say, well, I'm tired of this. I'm not going to follow God anymore. I'm not going to do my own thing. I'm going to go out and go wild and go crazy. It, how many know it's, it's a slow pathway often it is? One thing leads to another. And can, can I say, it, one sin always leads to another sin. Often just to hide the sin you just did. <laughs> and so 
just real quickly, David's pathway there was, was his, his uh, first mistake. He was idle. He, he wasn't out fighting the battles. Uh, you'll find there when you read there in, in 2 Samuel chapter 11. It, it says at the time when kings go to war, or go to battle, he stayed home. And uh, can I say, isn't it interesting that during this time of, uh, of the COVID-19 situation, that one of the problems people are having is uh, too much idle time. <laughs> They're getting on each other's nerves. Now don't look at your husband or wife now while, while I said that I'm next to you there, your kids. <laughs> They're getting on each other. P people are, are they, they say that more, more uh, uh, that, that pornography hits have just increased and skyrocketed. Uh, sometimes I, I tell you, church, it's good to be busy. It's good. And if no other reason why God says that we need to work with our hands is it keeps us busy doing good things so we don't do bad things. We don't have time to think about doing those things. And, uh, and, and there's something to that. But it, at the time when King goes to battle, he was idle. And he's, he's sitting around with nothing to do. And, and he, uh, he sees Bathsheba and you know the rest of the story. The, the, the second thing, though, they made there when he saw her, he could have turned and he could have walked away. But he took a second glance. And a third glance, probably. And too many glances. Ever how many it took, we don't know. But, but it was all over. And so, so we, we know that, that God says, look, to look on a woman to lust, we've already committed adultery where? In our, in our hearts. And so long before he ever had somebody sent to get her, but the third mistake he did was he, he, he well, first of all, he meditated on that temptation. He thought about it. That's the problem there. And then he, the third mistake, he wrongfully used God's given authority to commit adultery. He had somebody go get her and bring her to him. Not everybody could do that, but the king could. And so, uh, you know, as you, as you go along and sin grips you, it just, it, it always takes you lower than you ever intended to go. And it always has you doing more things that not only hurt you, that hurt other people. And the fourth mistake he made was he deceitfully tried to cover up his sin by bringing Uriah home. He brings her husband home, Uriah the Hittite. He, he thinks, well, he'll, he'll, he'll go in with her and everything will be fine. But he wouldn't. He wouldn't go and he slept outside. The next day, King David gets him drunk. Now he'll probably go into his wife, but he doesn't. He, he's an honorable man. And so King David, you know the story, he has him sent out to the front of the line purposely so that he would be killed and, uh, and so that he would die so that he could have his wife, Bathsheba. Well, that's the fifth mistake, committing murder to try to hide his sin. You know, that's the, that's the whole thing. And when we see what's happening in our nation today, and we see the craziness of all the news media and everything that's going on, it's like, who can you trust anymore? Uh, and, and, and people, you know, the interesting thing, we've come to a point where we, 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 we just lie. People just lie. I, don't, I hope we're not just lying, but people lie. And they know that they know they're lying, but they lie anyway. And then they lie to cover up their lies. And pretty soon, I mean, it's hard when you keep doing that to, to cover your bases. Yeah. And so he, he lied, and he, he finally committed murder to try and hide his sin. You see, justice is great when it's for others, isn't it? But whenever it's me, what do I want? Oh, God, give me grace. <laughs> oh, that rascal over there, he deserves justice. <laughs> but Lord, Lord, give me grace. Give me grace. Well, thank God if it wasn't for the grace of God, that amazing grace that we sang about, None of us would be here today. It would all be over already except for the grace of God. We see here when there is sin in our lives, God will strive to get us to repent. Now we understand that the Holy Spirit, and the, and the Holy Spirit brings conviction, doesn't He? One of the first things in the office works of the Holy Spirit in the life of anybody is that He convicts us of our sins initially, that we're a sinner and that we need a Savior. How I many know there's a lot of people, don't, they don't believe that. They don't believe they need a Savior. They believe they're okay. They, they believe maybe there is not a Savior, anybody that can save them from their sin. But Jesus brings deep-seated conviction. I'm praying, I pray that you pray during this time that we have some extra time in our hands. Let's pray that God will bring conviction all across America. Let's pray that God will bring conviction to those who've never known Him of their sinfulness and their need of a Savior, of their, and that they would be broken before our mighty God. Let's pray that God would bring a sweeping move of conviction in the church house across America, that those who go to church every Sunday or maybe once a month, however how many times it might be, 
that it would be more than just going to church and fulfilling an obligation, but they would feel that deep-seated need to get totally right with God and, and, and turn their hearts and their lives over to Him that He could use them. Because you see, this is the time, church, for the church to shine. This is the time not just to be able to go back into our buildings, and that's wonderful, but it's to, again, come out of those buildings and be the church throughout the week. Uh, amen? We, we, we've learned some things by, by force of what's happened to us, but are, it is things that we already should have been doing. Those of you who have been here at Kent Christian Center very long realize that for many years, over these doors right here, over the doors going out on the other sides, there used to be a little blue sign up there that said that you are now entering your mission field. <laughs> You are now entering your mission field. That's always been what it should be. Amen? That's always been what it should be. When you look at the book of Acts opposite, it wasn't when they were in church. It was when they are on their way to church and often on their way to a prayer meeting that miracles happened. Amen? Crowds gathered. They preached the gospel and thousands of people got saved. So let's just be the church. Let's do what we always should have been doing if we weren't. Amen? And if you're doing it, hallelujah, thank God for it. But let's be God's hands extended and reach out and, and let's go on and be what God would have us to be. You see, when there is sin in our lives, God will strive to get us to repent. We cannot afford to harden our hearts when God faces us with sin. We must repent. I'll just give you a quick illustration. That's where Pharaoh, you know, the Bible says that Pharaoh hardened his heart. Every time that God said, let my people go, and he said, no, his heart got a little harder and a little harder and a little harder. And he wound up, how could, a, how could a leader of a great nation allow so many people to die? And so, so and his na nation devastated rather than just let those people go. But anytime, and that's the danger, I want to keep a soft, pliable heart. God is the one. The Holy Spirit is the one that tries the reins of the heart. Amen. He knows my heart. Have you ever prayed? I, I've been times, several major times in my life when I've been praying. And, and the Holy Spirit convicted me, but I didn't realize it was the Holy Spirit convicted me. I thought it was the devil condemning me. And there is a de the devil is the condemner, isn't he? He's the one who, who, who's always condemning us. But it was the Holy Spirit. And I remember one time for, after like four hours, I was rebuking the devil. I was doing that. And then it just wasn't going. And finally I said, Lord, what is this? And the Lord opened up and showed me some ugliness in my heart that I would have argued with you till I was blue in the face if you'd accused me of it. I said, not me. <laughs> No, you got me wrong. That's not who I am. But the Lord showed me some things that had, over the years, had crept in. Ideas and thoughts. And, and can I say to you, church, we've got to be very careful now. We've got to be very careful that we don't just pick up terminologies and thoughts from the world. Amen? Even, even in the church world often, we need to be sure that we're very biblical in what we speak and what we say. And that we have heard from the heart of God before we say it. Amen? Because God wants to use His people to make a difference in this world. He really, really does. Well, why was David so great in the face of this sin? I believe it's because he truly knew how to repent. You, you can just write down Psalms 51. Most of you know Psalms 51 is, was David's prayer of repentance. Here's the difference. Remember King Saul, when he was called out, he even to the very last, he wanted Samuel. He said, well, Samuel, come, come and, and, and pray a prayer and and, and basically endorsed me because all these people, you know, they, if you don't do it, they're, they're not going to look on me favorably. It was all about him. It was all about what he looked like, what people thought about him. What happened when, when Nathan said, David, you're the man. Now remember, David, uh, Nathan came and he told David a story about, about a, a guy who somebody had stole his vineyard from him and all this. And, and he said, well, that guy deserves, that's why I said, he deserves justice and punish that guy for that. And then when Nathan said, David, you're the man. <laughs> and me say, those prophets were bold guys, weren't they? Because a king could just kill you instantly, have you killed, right, like that. You're the man. And what did David do? Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, he, he could have started making excuses. Well, it wasn't really my fault. It wasn't my fault. Give a thousand excuses. Well, I'm the king after all. I can do, I can do things other people can't do. I, I'm above the law. You know, he can do all those kind of things. But, but the, the, the telltale sign was the first thing that David did. You know, he repented. And, 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 and the whole song of Psalms 51 is his prayer of repentance and, and his desire, oh God, don't take your presence from me. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. What, what did he desire? He desired that, that presence, that relationship with God more than anything else in this life. And, uh, and he asked for forgiveness. He asked for cleansing. He asked God that God would wash him and he realized only God could do that. 
he could not fix himself. And, and church, uh, we're coming more and more to points where we got to understand we can't fix ourselves. We need a holy God. We need to call on the name of the Lord. We need to call on the Lord Jesus Christ and say, God, I need you to help me today. I need you to live this life like I ought to live and give glory and honor to you. The other thing you see in Psalms 51 in David's prayer of forgiveness for his sin, you see personal pronouns, me, my, and I, and not others. <laughs> I alone, Lord, me, it's me, Lord, that's standing in the place of need. Uh, you know, we used to sing that song, uh, it, it's true, it's, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, nor my sister, nor the president, nor the governor, or somebody else that I can lay some blame on, but Lord, I need prayer today. I need, I need a change in my heart today, God. I need a renewal of the Holy Spirit in my heart. Well, before I get totally blown away here, i got to stop. Don't worry, that's not another whole page. I, I, I thought about, Lord, why, why this, this seemed like a kind of a different message to preach on this Sunday. But here's, here's the, here's the wrap-up here that I believe the Lord spoke to my heart. Everybody here, I believe today, is a Christian, or you've had opportunity to be if you're not. We'd say we're believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as things get more and more stressful in church, they may get more stressful before it gets easier. If we believe we're in the last days, that's predicted to be so. But it does not mean that God is not at work during those times. But, but I simply say this, we need to be very careful that we don't get caught up with the crowds in any direction. We need, to, we need to make sure that we stay scripturally based according to the Word of God. And we know that whatever we do according to God's Word, we don't do it in hatred or anger or malice or, you know, there's a right way. Read the love chapter, amen, about all that it says about love. The, the child of God always does all that he does in love. It may be firm, it may be strong, it may be speaking what needs to be spoken, but it's done in love. And, and so I want to just challenge you, be very, very careful, because here's what I see. I see the enemy wants to divide. He, he's already got so many divisions across America as a whole, as a nation. There's so much divisiveness that he's opened up. But I know the enemy wants to divide the people of God too. He wants to get, get the people of God divided. He wants to get you just, you know, here's, here's one thing that is what God has spoken to me before this all came about it, uh, months ago was that, that we've got to watch, or guard, set a guard on ourselves because, because things are going to be so chaotic and stressful that sometimes we're just stressed out. And if we aren't careful, if we aren't careful, we make decisions, we say things, we do things that we should not have said. And we wouldn't have said if it wasn't for all the stress load and all the things that are going on. But suddenly everything's hitting us at once. And in a moment of weakness, and can I say to you, you understand this, it only takes a moment to say the wrong thing to mess up thousands of good things that you've done. <laughs> because people will jump on the one thing. And so I pray, God, God, help us to keep our hearts pure. Help us to keep our hearts in love with Jesus. Amen. And, and love our fellow man. Speak the truth when necessary, love. And by the way, sometimes we don't need, need to speak. I think sometimes people speak a lot. And we, you know, dur during this, I have a confession to make. Is it okay if pastor makes a confession? Well, I've gone back and watched a lot of gun smoke during this uh, time. <laughs> How many know it was a simpler time? Much simpler time. And, uh, and I, I just say, Lord, could we get back to some simplicity? <laughs> Things are so chaotic, you can't figure what's right. You got five experts all saying different things. <laughs> You know, and so uh, God, God help us. So I, I want us to just, uh, if we could stand together today, you don't have to stand in your cars. You can beep your horn if you're still with us out there, okay? <laughs> I would like to just take some time here to pray. If you're, you're gathered together in, in family groupings, you can certainly, uh, you probably hold hands or whatever at home anyway. If you're not, don't. But, uh, but, but I just want you to, Let's just pause and take about a minute here just to just say, God, uh, search my heart today, Lord. Search my heart today, Lord. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Lord, right now we just stand in your presence. Holy Spirit, we're in your presence, Lord. 
We know the enemy wants to bring destruction and havoc. But you, O oh God, you, O oh God, want to strengthen us and empower us. Lord, you want to change our heart, change us from the inside out, Lord. Help us to stay close to you. Lord, help us to ever love you and follow hard after God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, show us if there's any wicked thing in us today. Show me, Lord. Show me, Lord, my heart today. Lord, I ask you and I give you permission every day, Lord, every day, Lord, to show me my heart. Keep me pure. Keep me right before you, Lord. Keep my motives, Lord, correct before you, Lord Jesus. Not only what I do, but why I do what I do, Lord. That it would be with the right motive, the right direction. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I pray today for those hearts out here who are stressed, Lord. There's those here, in, in not, not only right here in this parking lot, Lord, but people whose lives are stressed right now, Lord. And the enemy is wanting to wreak havoc in their lives. I pray they'll cry out to you, O oh God, and allow you to touch their hearts and touch their lives and bring peace, Lord, in the midst of the turmoil, peace in the midst of the strife, O oh God. Lord, we, we know your word has declared our hearts by and large for ourselves, Lord, are desperately wicked and deceitful. And we saw all those ugly things that come from our hearts, Lord. But God, you can change our hearts uh, where there are different things that come. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, and peace, and goodness, kindness. Uh, Lord, these things that are powerful, that change the world, Lord, can come from the hearts of our people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. And Lord, we, we had determined we were going to come and have church rain or shine. And Lord, we thank you that we've been dry and that's great. But Lord, we just pray for a great outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon us. Lord, I pray, I pray God for these who have come today and those who are unable to come that can watch it on the live stream, Lord, or on YouTube. I pray, Father, that, that in some way, some way, Lord, their hearts and lives have been touched and changed. And God, we thank you for the church. We thank you for the body of Christ. I thank you for my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, uh, that you knit our hearts together as one. God, may you be glorified now throughout this week and all that we say and do, Lord, as, as businesses are beginning to open up a little bit, it seems like, and other things, we pray, God, that you would just uh, help us, Lord, as we go about our business, Lord, as we restart, and uh, Lord, to enter into new things that you've taught us, Lord, but Lord, also to see some of the things we already knew and did, Lord, were perfectly fine, Lord, and we need to just continue in them. We thank you, Father. God, search our hearts now, Lord. God, and fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that we would sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing in our hearts, making melody to the Lord, Lord. Instead of those old words that we used to use, Lord, we use words of glory and honor and praise unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The mighty God is his name. We give you praise and glory and honor. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for coming. Um, and you don't have to run off real quick. Uh, you know, try to try to you know keep the social media things going and all that as long as you're here in case you're watching. But uh, but take some time to say hi because some of you came a little later, some of you came early. But take some time to say hi to one another before you take off. All right. God bless. Thank you for coming. Yeah.